here at Johnson Haygood Stadium in Charleston, South Carolina. It's the 100th meeting of a Palmetto State rivalry. The Furman Paladins in to take on the Citadel Bulldogs on our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week. Hi, everybody, and welcome aboard with Todd Agney, Pete Hannity with you. Furman playing its final game of the spring. It's been a disappointing few weeks for the Paladins. They were one of the picks to win the SOCON in the spring. The Citadel continuing a season that began back in the fall. They picked up their first win against Wofford last week. A lot of momentum for them here, and both these teams really looking at this game today as kind of a catapult for what could be ahead in the fall. Well, they certainly do want to set the table, unfortunately for you and I and the people watching today, animosity. These two teams don't like each other, and if you like football, then this is going to be the one that you're going to watch with these two teams going at it. They always tell you in conflict resolution, don't go in to pick a fight. I think in this game, you better be ready to not only pick the fight, but also finish the fight. We know we're going to see a lot of running on each side. Devin Wynn, the centerpiece for the Furman Paladins in 2019. He had their first 1,000-yard rushing season in nearly a decade. He's the guy that's going to touch the ball a whole bunch. Yeah, and if you didn't know that Devin was a veteran, all you got to do is get a quick look at him. He runs with very good pad level. He won't run pad past his blocks in a two-back scheme, which we think we'll see more of today. He could post some very big numbers. On the other side, you have the Citadel with their quarterback, Jalen Adams, a guy that is using the spring for everything that it's worth, getting that experience, learning how to run this offense. His job today, get this team out in front early, not have to rely on any late game heroics and let Citadel football take over, which is time of possession. The Citadel's won four of the past six in the series. Furman goes for a 61st victory all time against its low country rival. And we're back to kick it off when we return to Charleston after this. Sisson 0 for 2 so far, 55% this season. They'll hand off. Abrams was looking for a hole, but there are the Bulldogs. Nice job leading the way. What a great spring season Anthony Britton's had. He leads this Bulldogs team with 81 stops going all the way back to the fall. And he's also a guy that can get you some stops for a loss. He's not fooled here. He realizes that Furman's just trying to get some positive yardage and maybe put their punting team in a better situation. Saw that hit by Britton. He had 13 stops, including the clinching tackle last week at Wofford. Pressure comes and a block. And the special team strike for the first score for the Citadel Bulldogs. Your kid, just look away and hope that he does actually hit the football. <laughs> Into the wind, kick is short. It hops, live ball, recovered by the Bulldogs. Special teams strike again for the Citadel. It is a third of how you win football games. You win on offense, you win on defense, you win on special teams. And if the Citadel can capitalize here, that's 14 points off of miscues. That's a misunderstanding on the return of the rules of the game. Adams, he'll keep. Room to run, 10-5, touchdown. Jalen Adams, his sixth rushing touchdown of the season. And just like that, we're on the verge of a 14-0 game. Never shows he's going to do anything differently here with the ball. This is why you always have to hit the quarterback in this offense on every single play. He tucks it. He reads it. They run to the boundary. They've got size over there. They just clean it all up for him, and he walks in untouched. Little fake pitch over the middle. Miller. Grab from behind, touchdown saving tackle by Parrish Gordon. Fourth and five, Paladins eight of 14 this season on fourth downs. And against the Citadel, you have to go for it in these situations because you're going to be limited in possessions since they chew up so much time. Sisson backpedaling, leaping grab, Miller first down, spinning, five. And he's in, touchdown. Delayed call. I wasn't sure if he stepped out. We may get a review, but how about Ryan Miller showing you some dynamic play with the yards after the catch? Well, the catch, everything. Watch this. He has to stretch out to make this. Then he has to negotiate. Then he has to take a hit. Yards after getting hit. And we talked about momentarily ago, we talked about what an explosive athlete he can be. You've got to get the ball into the hands of those players. And right now it's paying some dividends for the uh, for the Furman Club. See the athletic training staff attending to a Furman player who's down. The big bridge in Charleston, the backdrop for our Ingalls SOCON game of the week halftime winding down. We've got a good one in this rivalry battle. The Citadel up by six 
on the Furman Paladins with Todd Agney. Pete Hannity back with you. And a first half that included two big special teams plays, one that directly led to a score, the other set one up for the Citadel. Furman seemed to kind of get things going in the second quarter, and it's a kind of competitive game you would expect out of a rivalry. It is. I'm a little surprised at some of the mistakes, uh, especially you mentioned the special teams, some things I didn't think that we would see happen. The pitch on the option hasn't always been clean. Sometimes it's worked, sometimes it hasn't. The Citadel has not thrown the ball for a yard yet, but they do have almost double the amount of plays as Furman, if not more. That could be a problem. If you're getting towards 70, 80 snaps in a game, you've controlled the clock, you don't let the other offense out there, and you beat down the defense. Take a look at the first half numbers, and one that includes obviously good work on the ground, as you would expect out of the Bulldogs against the top rushing defense in the SOCOM. What else jumps out at you from that opening half? Well, I mean, just again, the passing numbers. I thought we'd see a little bit more yards out of, this, out of the Citadel. The turnovers has surprised me a little bit. Normally, you turn the ball over, you lose about 20% chance of winning the ball game. Luckily, these two teams have each turned it over, so they're still pretty much even. It's been a clean game. The time of possession, again, I knew that the Citadel would have the advantage today. I didn't think it would be by that margin. Take a look at the first half uh, highlights. We'll try to do that on the other side of this timeout. We'll take a break, come back with our third quarter of action as the Citadel Bulldogs try to make it five wins in the past seven against Furman after this. He's the deep back. It's Sisson under center this time. Sisson fires and incomplete. Looked like Parrish Gordon might get a hand on it. He didn't, but pass falling to the turf at the back of the end zone. Well, the Citadel obviously wants to pin Furman back as close as they can to the goal line. Well, I've seen this guy hang him, too. I mean, I've seen four, five, even six seconds full short here. And that is exactly what they wanted to do. It was an end-over-end punt, and they'll let it die at the one-yard line. So... What looked like a promising drive suddenly stalled. The special teams coming through again for the Citadel Bulldogs. Paladins back on offense at their own one when we come back on our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week. Obviously, Furman hoping to do that in these next couple of snaps, but Adams breaks the tackle and breaks away. And Jalen Adams, his second rushing touchdown of the game, and that might be the dagger. Now there's five styles of play in theory, right? Field position, ball control, big play, running game, passing game. And the Citadel was content on coming out here with ball control and running. And look, the other theory, the big play theory. Freezes the linebackers, finds a hole, and the young man deserves that run. You know, 5-11 is plenty of time. And pressure comes, and he's sacked. And you can't take those. I mean, you can, and you do. You don't want to. He's trying to make a read. He's waiting for development. Carson Hatchett picking a great time for his first career sack, the freshman out of Blunchville, Florida. Right, right off the edge. Nobody picks him up. There's a miscue, a misunderstanding on the front line, and he's barely even touched. Fourth down. Obviously, you've got to get the first down, if nothing else. And they bring pressure, and Sisson has it deflected, and it's intercepted. And it's going to go for a pick six. How do you like that? We talked about the heat that Sisson was going to face today, that the Citadel will come at you like nobody else in this league. And Jay Smith, a defensive lineman's dream, although that's his second interception of the season. They just come at you in waves, and that's why I place so much emphasis earlier in the broadcast. You cannot turn the ball over against these guys because they will just, they'll just, look, they'll, you go from having a seat at the table to being on the menu with his, with his team, and it happens so quickly. Second interception of this fourth quarter thrown by Sisson. That gives him nine during the spring and the extra point try pretty much a moot point at this stage makes it a 26 to seven game and the Citadel Bulldogs look to continue their recent run over the Furman Paladin. McElveen. And that is probably the final snap of our game today, indeed it is, as the clock goes to all zeros and the Citadel Bulldogs 
make it back-to-back -back wins this spring as Brent Thompson and Clay Hendricks, the handshake, the rivalry head coaches, each with a lot of respect for each other. And the Bulldogs, a week ago they headed up to Spartanburg looking at road games against Wofford and VMI sandwiched around a home game against rival Furman to close out their 12-game season in the fall and the spring. And they were 0-9, but here they are with their comeback last week, and then today they took a lead and they let it hold up. Next Saturday on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week, 1.30 for the Citadel and VMI. Join us on many of these same stations for that. Todd, been a pleasure in a game today. The Citadel pretty much kind of established things early in control, took advantage of good special teams work, and here they are with a second straight win. Almost 40 minutes of possession time today. We talked about the number of snaps that they would get. They had 73 offensive plays today. And so a Citadel Bulldogs team that we told you Furman was going for a 61st win in the series. Instead, the Citadel Bulldogs get their 36th triumph all time against their rival from the upstate. Had a lot of fun here at Johnson Haygood Stadium today. And again, next Saturday, join us at 1.30 along our network for the Citadel and VMI. For now, on behalf of Todd Agney and our fine crew here in Charleston, Pete Gannity saying so long. This has been a presentation of ESPN.